welcome to another episode of the Kirsty Knits and Sews podcast. My name is Kirsty, and you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Kirsty Knits and Sews, and I will put that down here for you. I love sewing, I love knitting, I've been sewing since I was 15, um, sewing quilts since I was 15, and knitting probably since I was 13. Um, so I love both. I also crochet. Um, what I'm wearing at the moment is actually a crocheted shawl. Um, it's, hmm, how bad is this? I've worn this so many times and I found an end that is not woven in. Whoops. Um, but this is a Vira shawl crochet pattern, free pattern on Ravelry. I'll see if I can find it and link it below. Um, very, very easy to do. Um, yeah, so I crochet, I knit, I sew, I love all the fibre arts and I want to get into the ones that I don't do yet, like weaving and spinning. Anyway, I live here in Zeszów in Poland with my husband and two kids and today I am drinking a Fuse iced tea, I think it's peach and hibiscus. Um, which is just one that I can get from my local shop. It is hot here today. It's meant to be in the low to mid 30s today and tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll head to the pool. So I don't have to be wearing this, but I like to wear something handmade when I can. Um, and oh, I should mention this yarn is Manos del Rios, I believe. And I bought it from the Granny Square, I believe in Richmond, Victoria. They also have one in Katoomba and in the city in Sydney. But I bought this one in the Richmond, Victorian one. So there you go. Um, I have some whips to show you today. I have some finished objects to show you today. Um, this basket is mainly just because it's pretty, but they are just some of my sock yarns waiting to be made up into socks and there are a couple that I will show you later. But let's jump in to finished objects. I have three, I did not put any of these on the sock blockers. I have three finished objects to show you today for socks. So I'm just going to start talking to you while I put them on and I'll put them on in order of finishing. I started them all on the same day because Crazy Sock Lady, the Crazy Sock Lady hosts Summer Sock Camp. And so I cast on all the socks for Summer Sock Camp and I shared the beginnings of them last week in my podcast. So this week you will see three finished objects. And these are large sock blockers. They're still not big enough for these socks because these are for my father-in-law and he has big feet. These are the first pair. So you can see the toe, that's the large sock blocker. The toe comes out to here. Um, but these are the first pair. It is getting blown out a little bit. It's not quite that dark, uh, that bright, but it helps you see all the different tones and colors in there. It is absolutely beautiful. That's more the color it is. This yarn is called Mariana Trench. This is the little bit that I have left over in a ball. That's going to focus. Maybe not. Anyway, that's what it is. Mariana Trench. Beautiful, beautiful colours. This is dyed by Maximu Yarns. He dyes yarn in the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. It is beautiful. I can't remember if this is the ultra soft sock or the luxury sock. I got some of both. Um, and I have the tag for this somewhere, but I don't know where. So I don't remember which one it is. And part of the reason for that is when I start knitting socks, I put the tag in the bag that I'm knitting them in and I keep it with the project. But I actually started these socks nine months ago when I moved from Australia, Poland. These were on the needles. 
and when I finished them, or when I got partway through, I went, these are too big, like too wide in the leg, too wide in the foot, because I'd gone down a needle size and up a sock size to make them the large, I should say, the pattern is the Vanilla Socks and Magic Loops by the Crazy Sock Lady. So I'd gone down from what I usually knit it in, I usually knit a 2.5 millimeter. I'd gone down to a 2.25 millimeter and up to the large to see if that would work. And it was huge. So I decided that that wasn't going to fit my father-in-law. And I thought maybe it would fit my husband because my husband has a very large arch or a high bridge of the foot. I'm not sure. So anyway, I tried that and they were too big for him as well. So I just frogged the sock and that meant that I had two balls already and so I decided I would do them two at a time. Now it wasn't even balls because one was a sock and that, and that was leftovers but of the two that is what I had left over. Tiny tiny little bit and a decent chunk. So that's fun. I did have enough. I didn't have to join for the toe, um, but I wasn't sure for a little bit there. So anyway, they are, those socks, absolutely beautiful, and they will be sent to Australia for the recipient soon. So I cast them on again on May 28th, two at a time, uh, for Summer Sock Camp. If you haven't heard of Summer Sock Camp or you haven't heard me mention it before, um, it is basically a knit all the socks in from June to August, I believe. Um, but it started May 28th. So knit all the socks and go to the Crazy Sock Lady. I will link her below so you can find out more information about that if you are interested in trying socks. Um, I knit these on 2.5mm, so 2.5mm Chiaogu circulars. And I believe they were 40 inch they were at least they were at least 80 centimeters I think I did the 100 centimeters so 40 inches not the 32 inches but they're done yay and it also feels really good to have them done because I had already knit an entire sock and then frogged it and then re-knit them so it really helped doing them two at a time for that reason so I I think that's everything. There is a two at a time tutorial by the Crazy Sock Lady on YouTube, which is what I use for those socks. So I will link that below. So if you are interested, you can go have a look. Oh, I just found a progress sticker, a stitch marker in this next sock. That was clever of me. So these next socks are also going back to Australia, but are not for my father-in-law. These are for my brother-in-law. Hopefully he will like them. Um, these are, let's go yarn first. The yarn is an opal yarn called Fresh, Fresh Frund 2. I presume that that's not English and therefore the two should be pronounced differently. This is what that looks like. It is one that is a self-patterning, so it has lots of different colours in there. And this is what it works up into. So it's kind of a faux fair isle style. Um, they're not matching socks. I did not try and make the yarn to the right point to start the second one. This was the first one, and I actually really like how you have kind of a contrast heel and a contrast toe but I didn't actually do anything. And also that this starts just before the cuff. Like it kind of all worked out just naturally to make that. And I considered doing it matching and then I forgot and oh well. So they are those two. Again, Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop by Crazy Sock Lady. But these ones I knit on Addy Flexi Flex. And I think I mentioned last time, I bought them when I was just starting to get into sock knitting and I didn't know what I liked and what was comfortable. And then I never used them. I cast on a sock and I found it very awkward to hold the needles and moved on to other things. Um, but I came back this summer sock camp and said I'm going to 
try to complete a sock with them. And I did. I completed the pair. They worked really well. I actually really liked them. I did do these at home. Um, so actually these ones and these ones here were the ones that I did while watching TV or just sitting around the house. Um, because they both took a little bit more mental focus um, two at a time with the yarn management, these ones with the style that I hadn't knit before and also I didn't want to lose one of the flexi flips on a bus or something because I often knit on buses. Um, so it was just doing it at home but it meant that they're both finished. So I obviously knit a lot more at home than out. Um, but yeah, so Addy Flexi Flips, I would recommend them. They are, for those of you who don't know, I do have them here. This is what the box looks like. And they are just like a circular needle. They're joined at the bottom. And then they have one sharper and one not so sharp point. Um, and so I always knit with the sharper and knit off the blunter one but it means that it's kind of like the DPN but instead of having two separate straight sticks you have a joint one or two joint that are shorter um so yeah I quite enjoyed it I will knit more like this um I really enjoyed doing the heel on these because I it meant that when I'm doing magic loop it's connected and it is obviously, I mean, the cord's there and it's not an issue and I do it all the time, but I really enjoy just having the other side sitting there and just been working back and forth on one needle and the other one just sitting on the other needle. It was really nice. So anyway, they're done, they're finished, they're on their way back to Australia now that I have shown you. And the third pair that I have finished. One, two. This one was so much fun. So this one is Zauber Ball Crazy Colorway 2475 called Background Noise. And this is the yarn that I have left over. Now it is a gradient. It is a like a more barber cord. I don't know if you can see that. It's two ply spun together, but the spies, plies are both gradients. And so sometimes you get more of a barber cord and sometimes you get more of a tonal, depending on where it's up to. But it's a Zabba Ball Crazy. I would call it a light fingering. I went down to a 2.25 millimeter for these ones because the 2.5, when I had done them previously with a different sock in this yarn, I found it too too loose a fabric when I was doing it on the oh good when I was doing it on the 2.5 millimeter so again this is the vanilla socks and magic loop by the crazy stuff lady but this time I did an afterthought heel now this was the first time I've done an afterthought heel I thought about it a few times and I have to say I loved it. I'm a big fan. Now, the reason I did an afterthought heel with these um, originally is because it is a gradient and you can see it kind of changing colour throughout and I wasn't sure. Um, I've done another pair of socks with this Zabba Ball Crazy before. Actually, it was this one exactly. And when I did the heel stuff in gusset, it broke up the gradient at the front. And so there was a very clear from the top very clear distinction in between the line and then at the bottom it was the gradient and I knew for the person that I was doing it for it wouldn't matter and I knew for this person these are for it wouldn't matter either but I wanted to see if I could do an afterthought heel because I've heard of them and I thought why not um now the gradient here it's darker colors it's much more well less intense and so it wouldn't have bothered me at all to not do an afterthought heel and to just change up the pattern and you can see the other one as well um, again really long too long for the sock blockers 
but you can see this one as well, like the gradient, if I had a purple here and then come back into the yellow, like it would have been a mark, but not super noticeable because the whole yarn is pretty similar colours, except for maybe this red stripe. But I decided to do the afterthought heel. And I'm really glad I did. It was a true afterthought heel, which is where you pick up the stitches and then cut the yarn. It's not, so I didn't use waist yarn to put them on or anything like that. I just knit the tube, cut, I picked up all the stitches, cut it, unraveled it to where I wanted it unraveled, and then knit. And it means that this heel is basically the same as the toe. Slightly different, basically the same. And I did try it on, and while it was way too big for my foot, it actually was a very comfortable heel, which excites me because I still haven't found my perfect fit for a sock. So I'm going to try an afterthought heel for me and see if that helps. Um, I need to make some shorties to wear with my runners, which I'm in the process of, and I have one to show you here in a minute. Um, but yeah, so that's an afterthought heel. Um, following the tutorial, really, really fun. Okay. Um, keeps the gradient. If you're doing a self-striping as well, and it's also fun, it means you get the gradient of self-striping coming out on the heel as a separate thing. So these are both the same, um, the same yarn. If I hold it this way, you can see that it actually has the gradient going this way. So they match as well, even though they look different. I love gradient yarns. And I love using up scraps from previous projects. Woohoo! All right, so that was done on a 2.5 millimeter chow goo. And I will link the tutorial for the afterthought heels below. Woohoo! So they are my three finished objects for this week. Now on to, um, I'm just going to put this stitch marker away. I don't know if I've showed you this before. I keep my stitch markers in old deodorant tins. Now, no pong is a natural anti, anti odorant, which is made in Australia. And I love it. This isn't an ad in any way. My sister introduced me to it and I'm sold. Um, I use it every day. I was always a little bit stinky when I used other deodorants. And then when I found this one, I'm fine. And I can go all day without feeling self-conscious about my smell. Um, but it's also just a natural made in Australia one. And this one, I get spicy chai. They also have a natural, but I get the chai because I like to try. Um, but they're just little aluminium tins, I believe. And when they're done, you can recycle it or, as I do, use it for something different. So I find them perfect. I will link no problem down below in case you're interested in finding out more about it. I find them perfect little tins for holding stitch markers. I mean probably isn't the best tint to show you because they're all yellow and shiny. Um, but it holds my darning needle. It holds my actual stitch markers. That one came from Daffodil Road Yarns in Australia. It holds my Progress Keepers. That one is from Obsession Yarns, I believe, in Australia. And all of my little light bulb markers, which some of them are from eBay, some of them are from Hobby. I have them from all over these days. Um, but yeah, I just find it a super useful little tin that I can pop with everything in it. And I have considered these, it is printed, it's not like a sticker that you can peel off, but I have considered getting stickers to put on top. I just haven't yet. So, yeah, I have lots of these, so I use them. Alright, so, that is finished objects. Now for whips, works in progress. 
Now I do have more than I'm going to show you today. I'm only going to show you things that I have made progress on since the last episode. And normally I've been pretty good in making progress on all of my whips, but because of summer sock camp and trying to get these socks done so they can be shipped, I have been work working mostly on socks and I've had less time to knit um, for multiple reasons, but I haven't been knitting as much this month as I was last month, um, which is fine, but it means that there's not as much progress overall as you may have seen previous episodes. So the first one that I will show you is my honeycomb Aaron. This one, last episode, I was saying I'm not going to get it done in time for the cable sweater, crazy cable sweater knit along which was finishing June 1st. And I was right. I didn't get it done. The yarn did arrive. I was short a ball of yarn to finish. And so the yarn did arrive as I was editing. So I think I put the note in for the last podcast, but it was already after June 1st. So this is the yarn that I'm using. It is Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury Cream. The number is, or the shade is 302 and it's a 10 ply. 100% merino superwash. Sorry, 100% wool superwash. Um, 300 meters to 200 grams. Now, this Bendigo Woolen Mills is a basically sells straight to public, and so the prices are really good. And if you're looking for sweater quantities of commercially dyed yarns, I would recommend. They have wool, cotton. And then they have different things like tweed or bamboo that come out occasionally. Um, I love the yarn. I've knit many jumpers for myself, my kids. Knit one for my husband that we ended up giving away because it was too big. Um, but I love the yarns. This one is... See, I haven't even made a huge amount of progress since last time, but I have made some. This sweater is... The Honeycomb Aran by Patterns, and it is a free pattern. Um, I will link my Ravelry project pages for all of these, so if you're interested in notes on what I'm doing, um, or patterns, or yarns, you can go there and have a look. If something is not there that you want to know, please comment below and I will do my best to answer. Um, but yeah, so that is what I've done. This is the front that I'm working on now. And you can see from here, this is what I've done since the last episode. So it hasn't got a lot of love in the last month. Um, and that's just because it wasn't a priority. I did a lot in May trying to get it finished, which didn't happen. But I have been prioritising Christmas knits because when you live in another country and you're waiting for three months, for a parcel to be shipped, because it's much cheaper to ship than fly postage, um, you have to think ahead and work ahead. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so I do want to get this finished, but I also figure I'm not going to wear it until kind of September minimum, um, more likely October, November. So I figure I'll pick it up again in August or September and see if I can finish it off in time for the cold weather. But at the moment, I am noticing it is hot, and so I'm not wanting big knitting things on my lap anyway. Speaking of, I'm going to take this off. You can just see my beautiful maroon coloured shirt. Woohoo! Um, the I am knitting the Honeycomb Aran on Addy Circulars 5mm, and I'm not using a cable needle. Um, you can see all those cables, they are cables, but I'm not using a cable needle. I am doing it cable needleless, and I'm following a tutorial. Well, I read a tutorial in the knitting magazine, which I can also link below, but that's just the way that I'm doing it. So basically you, rather than putting it on the cable needle and putting it to the front, you um, put your needle into behind the two that you need and then you pull them all off and put the other needle into the two that are sitting without a needle in it 
and you put the other two back on the needle. <sighs> yeah, if you're a visual person, that would not be helpful. Anyway, the tutorial has pictures. Recommend reading it. I find it a lot easier. It is scary the first few times, but if you are used to frogging things or ripping back or picking up stitches that you've dropped, I promise you it's not that scary. Give it a try. It saves a lot of time. And I find it a lot more relaxing because I'm not juggling that extra cable needle and like putting down this needle to pick up the cable needle. I'm just holding two needles, doing a little bit of a reshuffle, knitting, reshuffle, knitting. So I do like it. And there's, I, I think I can safely say there's no way I'd be this stuck through if I was using a cable needle because I'm much quicker without it. All right, the next project that I have is my scrappy blanket. Now this one has gotten a bit of love and I have finished, I don't even know if I've got a marker on here. Let me see. I may not have. Anyway, it has gotten quite a bit of love. Um, but I don't know how much. So I'm not going to stretch out the whole thing. But that is what I have so far. Now this is a pattern called the Bits and Bobs Blanket by Kay Jones. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I'm using 4mm Knit Pro Nova circulars, um, which are really good with the blanket. I find the cord was annoying me a little bit, but it weighed down by the blanket and becoming more used. Happy. Um, this one, it is a four ply hole double. So the one that I'm using consistently throughout is Easy Care Merino. And it's just a cool grey. The number is four, zero, zero, four. It's a hundred percent wool superwash. Um, it's 50 grams, it's about 185 meters. So I'm gonna need 11 or 12 balls of this for the entire blanket. Maybe more because I actually cast on a few extra stitches to make it a bit bigger. So I'm doing it with 189 stitches. I can't remember what the pattern calls for. Um, but I'm doing 189 stitches and it is a, I don't know, fisherman's rib or half fisherman's rib. I'm not sure. It basically, it looks like a brioche, but it's not. It's just one, one strand. Well, it's held double, but it's one strand the whole time. Um, I absolutely love it. It is squishy. It is soft. And for the scraps, I'm using all four plus all four or five ply and so far no soft yarn so nothing that is a high twist sock or a nylon included um, like this gray and this green or even polyester or acrylic or something um, they're left over from a tea cozy that I did that I just wanted some cheap yarn for um, down to this beautiful merino singles that is a indie dyed beautiful yarn so it's all scraps and none of it is sock yarn. And once I finish this disgusting grey acrylic poly, whatever it is, I'm going to be out of my non-sock scraps. And so that is when I need to decide whether or not I'm going to add sock yarn or whether I'm going to wait until I have more non-sock scraps. Um, it's not, I mean, I could use sock yarn. There's nothing saying that you can't use sock yarn. I've seen people do sock yarn. I just like uh, the idea of scrappy socks. And I can't use this yarn for scrappy socks, so I'm quite happy to use it for a blanket. But if I can make scrappy socks, why would I use it in a blanket? So I've got to decide. But I do have these little bits that I have wound up previously that... Some of them aren't sock yarn. And so I'm thinking I actually might use the not sock yarn ones of these and then decide. But even that, it's hard because these are all about the same length. And I don't want to have all the stripes about the same length because it's scrappy. 
So I thought I'd decide what to do there. But it hasn't gotten a huge amount of work, basically because I've been focusing on projects that need to get done. But also, I'm trying to keep it for Scrappy Sunday. I wasn't for the first week or two, but now I kind of am. But then Scrappy Sunday comes around and I'm not knitting much at home because I'm out. And so it doesn't... Like, I think I did three rows on it last Sunday. I should find a progress sticker and put it in so we can see. But anyway, if I'm not finished the row next time, I won't show. Um, but I am loving it. It is a lot of fun and very addictive. Now, the next one that I have... Uh -huh. So this yarn is Opal Gutnacht and it is 75.5 wool nylon. It is number 9895 in greys and I have finished the calf. Very, very early days for this one. Now this one I'm doing on a Addy sock needle. And so if I pull this down, you can see it is a circular, but they are different size needles. Um, I have been playing around with it. I was doing it the way I normally knit. I've just changed to doing it continental and more specifically Norwegian style. Um, I think it's gonna end up bigger because of that because I just tend to knit looser when I'm knitting continental, I think. I don't know if that's an all people thing, um, but also because of the needles, you've got to hold them very loosely because they're so small. So I normally knit English style, but I'm learning to knit like this and we'll see how long it goes. I'm thinking I might just do an afterthought here with these because I know I will get it done a lot quicker if I just knit a long tube and then um, cut in for the heel. If I'm trying to do the heel as I go, that means I need to do purling, and I just know that I will be much slower if I do purling incontinental. So I'm thinking I'll just knit tubes, finish the toe, and be done with it. Um, yeah, so I'm enjoying it, but because it's slower and it's a newer to me thing, I'm not picking it up to work on it because deadlines. So we'll see if that changes now. I have some things that I can pick up and take and work with me when I'm out. This one, I probably could now that the cuff is finished and that I figured out how to hold the needles. Um, so maybe I'll take this and put this in my bus knitting. We'll see. Um, I, but I did look up Norwegian style purling because that's a different way of purling where you're manipulating the right needle instead of moving your left finger and it has more steps to it like as in the movement takes a little bit longer I think but it is less strain I think I haven't done it for long enough to know so I'm gonna have to I mean I will I don't have to but I will Keep going through with that and seeing how it goes. Um, but at the moment, it's sitting there, getting worked on every now and then. Um, I did forget to tell you the these socks, Mariana Trench. I do have, because I don't have the label for that, this is his label, Maximu Yarns. And so this one that I'm holding right now is an 85% merino, 15% nylon. Um, the one, I'm not sure if it's the same or if the other one is an 80-10-10 with 10% being cashmere. Uh, but that's the label I've loved. I have three skeins of his. I love them all. Um, Mariana Trench are the first ones that I finished. But I am onto the foot on another one which I'm doing continental style which is why it's taking a long time and these ones this is called Tiger King so these are going to be my lockdown socks and I may make shorties for me 
and if I can find a matching contract thing for my husband. We can have matching shorties because we watched Tiger King in lockdown, like most other people. If you haven't seen Tiger King, it's horrifying, but hilarious. Okay, the next one that I have for you, I have to show you, is Crazy Grey, is what I call it. And I have almost a half finished object. I'm also doing an afterthought here for this one. So you can see before I've cut in, it's just, I cast on the heel, a bit of long tube through the toe. Um, the afterthought heel tutorial that I follow, it has information about where to mark the heel and how to cut in for the heel, how to know the length of your foot when you're doing the heel like that. Um, oh, well that's fun. Oh no, okay. I was like, I still have a thing, but this isn't finished yet. This is the half finished object, so that's fine. Um, it has all the information on measuring and things like that. So obviously the one pair that I've done with an afterthought thought heel hasn't been tried on the person that it's meant to fit yet, but the way that this woman, um, Kay, does her measuring, I found it really helpful every other time I followed one of her things. So if you're interested, go check it out, um, the way to mark, all of that. This one, I have just got past the cuff on the second, so this one is still early days for the second but this is it's just knitting a tube it is so easy so this will become my travel sock these ones were my travel socks previously and they are now done and i am planning the afterthought heel to be in this fabric so it'll have a dark pop for the heel in this one it'll be fun um yeah, so loving this. I should tell you, this is another Zabba Ball Crazy. That's, I'm going to use the same yarn. This one is number 2428 and it's called Mud Pack. Now, to me, it just looks like greys. So I don't know why it's called Mud Pack. I'm pretty sure it's called Mud Pack. When I ordered these, I ordered six, and I got six, but two of them were the same, and therefore not one of them wasn't the one I ordered. They'd made a mistake in the order. So I contacted them, and they sent me the one that I ordered. I sent them the wrong one back. But it meant that when I was ladling everything in my book, I got a little confused at one point. So I'm pretty sure this is mud pack, but it just doesn't look very muddy. It just looks more greys. Which is fine, because I picked it based on the colours, not the name, but I don't know, do you think that looks muddy? Anyway, so I'm loving it, it is good, easy to knit up, here's the label. So it is another 7525 superwash nylon. Um, yeah, and I, I'm looking forward to doing another afterthought heel. It was really fun. Seriously, think about trying it. I, I mean, anytime you're cutting knitting, it is a little bit nerve wracking. I get that. We knit things, we understand that it's one long thread and if you cut that thread, then you get holes. That's what you are taught. But, it's actually a pretty easy way to learn to do things like cutting knitting because you already have the stitches picked up and when you're cutting it, you're cutting the middle part. So you're unraveling just half a row of stitches, but you're not going to drop any stitches because you've already picked them up on both sides. Um, the tutorial is very clear. Just think about it. It's a lot of fun. And my next thing will be to learn how to steak because Steaking. If you don't know steaking, steaking is knitting something in the round and then cutting it for either a cardigan or the vest, for the sleeves for the vest. Um, yeah. And people have been doing it for years. 
and sweaters that have been made that way are still surviving today. So think about it. I want to do it. I just need to have the time to knit the thing that I'm going to cut. I think is the main thing. Anyway. Um, yeah. Cutting knitting is not as scary as you think it is. But I say that as someone who's been knitting a lot and I'm learning how to do things like pick up stitches that I've dropped in brioche because I, I mean I can I can unravel cable stitches back 10 rows and then re-knit it correctly to fix a mistake but like just unraveling the cable so maybe six stitches down 10 rows and then re-knitting those six stitches back up um and I understand not everyone can do that so I'm not saying you have to go right now and do an afterthought heel or cut your knitting to do a steak but in the grand scheme of things the afterthought heel I think a beginner could do it it would be scary but I think you could do it because it's such a clear tutorial um, and you're only cutting one thread and then you're unraveling it very carefully like I just I think it would be fun um, staking you have to have a lot more confidence because it's a lot more work that you've put into it and a lot more possibility for it going wrong <sighs> but keep knitting the more you knit the more you want to try new things all right my next one I've only been working on since Friday night I cast this on because I was almost up to the second show in this pair and I was going into the movies and I wanted to be able to knit in the movies if I wanted to I didn't but I wanted the option to and so I cast on this and I'm almost finished oh, actually let me show you the yarn so this yarn is called Burt Micro Striping in neon purple and it is by what must have made a UK dyer I believe and I'm not gonna pull out the tag I'll show you another tag in a sec but look at that isn't that beautiful micro striping her burnt colourways is basically a speckled colourway. And so you can see the white bits there are speckled and then the purple is purple or purpley pink. Um, I absolutely love it. The pop of aqua that I've done there that I'm going to do the toe in is by Vera Yarns Designs. And it came in her neon rainbow set, which this is the turquoise colour in it. Um, it was six minis. 100% merino superwash high twist. So they are designed for socks, um, which is why I'm doing them for the heel and toe. And this one I'm going to do an afterthought heel. And you can see that it's marked down here, the afterthought heel, so that I didn't mess up the micro striping. These are going to be shorties and they're for me. And you can see the difference in length. Let me stretch this out again. You can see the difference in length between my socks and my father-in-law's socks. Once the toe's done, it's going to be maybe here. This was a lot quicker to knit, and understandably so. Um, this also has a longer leg, like the leg goes to here, where this one, the leg goes to here. Um, yeah, big difference in the length of time it takes to knit a sock for me and a sock. These ones I'm doing, I did a 10 round cuff in 2x2 two two rib and I just did the cast on and one round in the contrasting before I changed to the main. The main I've gone the whole way down and then I just did one row before the toe and then the toe in the contrasting as well. And I do that so that the first knit two together the stitches that I knit together are also in the contrasting colour. Otherwise, I find that you start getting the shaping for the toe 
showing up on the previous colour if you just start straight in without knitting around first. Does that make sense? Um, and then I am debating, so this is the contrasting one that I have, which like I said is from a different dyer, but I also have a yellow. And so I'm trying to decide now whether I do the heel in a yellow or whether I do like one complete blue contrasting and then the other sock with yellow contrasting or whether I just stick with blue um, or if I do a yellow heel. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm feeling just sticking with blue, but I, I don't know. These skeins, they're 50 gram skeins and they're designed to be odd sock skeins. So the idea is that you get different skeins or skeins in different colours and then you knit one sock in one colour and another sock in another colour and wear odd socks. 50 grams, I know I can do two normal size socks for me, let alone two shorties. So I may do the cuffs as like the not matching part, or I might just do three socks out of each skein if I have enough, and then I would have odd socks. Hmm. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the tag, what must have made. And this is one of the other skeins that I got. And two of the, so I got three skeins. I got the purple. And then I got a navy. And I got aqua blue. Um, and so these will be micro striping in the same way that that is. So oh, maybe I'll do this sock just in the blue. And then I'll do this sock with a purple heel and toe and then I can have two matching of these and two matching of these and then I can mix and match. That would be fun. Alright, gonna do that and then I'll find a different plan for this one. Hey, yarn is fun, colours are fun. Um, so these ones I'm doing on 2.5 millimetre chow goose. Um, I'm not following a pattern for this one. I'm trying a few things. So I'm doing the afterthought heel by the crazy sock lady. I'm doing the two by two cuff, which I normally do. Even when I'm saying I'm following the crazy sock lady's tutorial um, pattern, I still usually do a two by two cuff when hers is one by one. I'm doing a rounded toe. I'm doing an afterthought heel, but I'm only doing 60 stitches because I'm trying to find out what my ideal sock is, basically. And I find 64 to loose and I find 56 too tight so I'm trying for a 60 and I figure doing an afterthought heel will be good for that. If I like the fit I might also try a German short row heel um because I have a German short row heel sock but the yarn like it's just way too loose and so it doesn't matter what the heel is doing it doesn't fit properly so I'll think about that. Okay, I have one more finished object, oh sorry, one more whip, and this one is a baby whip. I started it last night, we watched Doctor Strange Mirrors of Madness or whatever it's called, um, Multiverse of Madness, I don't know. We watched the new Doctor Strange movie on Disney Plus and I cast this on and I will say it is a complicated cast on. Let's get into the, the details first. Okay, yarn. This one, this is also Vera Yarn Designs. It is called Slate and it is on her single ply merino. So Vera Yarn's Designs, I have done a jumper for myself before with it and it's very soft and beautiful. Um, this jumper, it holds four fingering weight held double. So I'm holding this double with this one, which is Drops Kid Silk. Um, and it is beautiful. I love the two together. I love the effect. I did do a gauge swatch and I'm hoping I'm not going to regret it because I may be pushing it close to this yarn again. I do this a lot. So we'll see how it goes. Um, 
but I love these two together and the effect that it gives. Um, so the this one is Slate, um, Virion Design Singles, 100% Super Rush Merino, and this is Drops Kid Silk Unicolor, 75% Mohair, 25% Silk, and it is Jeans, colour 27. Jeans. Um, I believe it would be Jeans in English, but this is the um, Polish website that I bought it from. It had Jeans. I got it from um, Lovietka which I showed you last episode, I believe, it arriving. So I have passed it on. The pattern I'm doing is the Maggie Pullover. It is coming soon. I believe it'll be released in August, and I am a test knitter for it. I have finished one and haven't shown you the finished object yet. That is waiting for the release. Um, but I decided to knit another one because it is beautiful and I love it. And while I can't wear it right now, I will wear it when it gets colder. But I found the fit a bit oversized. Um, I did do the largest positive ease that the pattern recommended. Um, but I did find it a bit oversized. So I decided to do it again. A size down. And then, or one or two sizes down. And then the designer made a few tweaks to the pattern to change the fit. So I was like, I'll knit it again with the new pattern. Um, just one size down and see if those tweaks with the minimum positive ease rather than maximum positive ease fix it for me um so this is gonna look messy i am at the very 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 beginning this is what i've got done literally like three rows also some tiny baby um they are i did hit gauge on this one so it's 4.5 millimeter and it will be beautiful when it's done um the reason I struggle with this is the provisional cast on. Struggle may be the wrong word. It's a provisional cast on. And that means that you cast on with a piece of cotton or scrap yarn and then knit up and then you pick up all those stitches and knit down. Um, and I can see why she's done that for the pattern, but it means you're casting on for me this time it was 300 stitches in a provisional cast on. Now I have 80 centimeter needles here, I believe. Maybe even less, maybe there. Yeah, 80 centimeter needles, 32 inches is what I've got here. Um, and it is tight. Like that's very bunched up. Um, and it means that when you're going around to make sure that it's not twisted, it's incredibly finicky, maybe, um, made more so by the hell of double. So I found it finicky when I was doing a single strand of eight ply, doing a double strand or hell double, I found it more finicky. Um, and I was also doing it in the dark while watching a movie, which doesn't help. But I did manage to do it again without twisting the first time around. Um, and most of my frustration with this was actually my own mistakes. Like, I almost ripped it out because I was like, I counted 40 stitches, not 50. And I should have 50 because I'd marked every 50. And I was like, what have I done? Like, how did I just miss 10 stitches? And then I realised it was after the first part of a decrease round. And so, of course, I've just decreased stitches. So I have less than 50 in the marker section. So I hadn't ripped out. I figured it out. Um... But you know how those little things where you are tired and you miscalculate and that affects the way that you see something. So I think that's most of what it is, but it is also just doing a provisional cast on for 300 stitches can be finicky. And I would recommend if you're buying needles for this project, buy 100 centimetre or 120 centimetre even, so 40 or 48 inches. Um, I think it would just be a bit easier, at least for the cast on, to have bigger. Maybe not for the whole thing, but definitely for the cast on. Um, so anyway, I'm doing it. I am excited to have this to wear when I'm ready, when it's finished, when we get cold again. Um, but the test knits are due end of July. And while this is my second one, so I don't feel that I have to have it finished because I've already finished a test knit for this test knit, I think it would be helpful 
for the designer to have it finished because the pattern changes are uh, I mean, significant enough that having complete test fits from beginning to end of the new changes will be helpful. Um, so yeah, I'm doing that. And particularly it was for Merino that she wanted or she was interested in changing it for specifically. And this is Merino held double with kid silk. So we'll see. Um, but I am excited about it. And let's see, is there anything else about it? No, I think that's it. So this is the Maggie pullover that will be released in August. And I will show you, as I'm working on it, I will not show you when it's finished until the release. So you get sneak peeks here while I'm working on it. Okay, so that is it for whips. The last thing that I'm going to take you through is finished objects. Oh, sorry, not finished objects. New things. Um, not yarn related, but this basket. How cute is that? This is handmade in Poland. I bought it from an ethnographic museum. So basically an outdoor place where there are buildings that are made, either remodeled or made from scratch or renovated in the design of some of the people who lived here traditionally in Poland. Um, and they had a, a fate where you could all go and see and they had different people selling things and they had these handmade baskets. So I got this one to hold knitting things and I love it. Um, it looks really pretty with yarn in it. I can't leave it like that. All my children will pull the yarn out, but it's pretty. So I got that. I got the, I got a package from my sister and that had some chowry needles in it from a sale that was in Australia. So I bought them and got her to ship them to me. Um, I think it was five pairs, but I can't remember the sizes. They were either 80, 32 inches, 140 inches or 120 centimeters, 48 inches in different sizes. Basically a couple more sock needles and a couple more for sweater knitting or shawl knitting but they are in my stash. I also got from my sister some scrap yarn for when we start the sea glass sweater which will be beginning of August so I haven't got that here to show you I've just popped that in with the rest of my sea glass sweater stuff um, and the parcel I sent to her should be arriving any day so we may bring that forward to July instead of August. We'll see. If you're interested in knitting the sea glass sweater and want someone to knit with, please let me know and we will make, give you more information about start dates and things like that. It is a scrappy one by one colour work sweater. And so I love the idea, but I do think knitting with people will make it easier. The other thing I got from my sister, which I will show you, I haven't actually opened it, so it's used it correctly, and I am going to put this away and not look at it properly, but I thought I would share it with you. We are doing an advent calendar swap. Now, yarn dyes make advent calendars, and they are beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And I have yarn envy every time I see them. I'm like, I want one of them, but they are also expensive because people are dying individual mini skeins, they're dyeing them, they're um, skeining them, they're wrapping them. Like it's a big deal to get that done. It's huge. The amount of work that goes into it is massive. So I think the price is absolutely reflective of what you're getting, but I don't have the money to buy them. And neither does my sister. And so we looked at them last year and both of us were like, we really like them. But we were like trying to figure out payment plans for the year to try and get something. And it was just a lot. And so instead of doing that, we decided we would swap yarn. Because 
we both knit. We both knit socks, we both knit fingering weight, we both knit DK weight sweaters, and so we decided we would swap and make our own advent calendars. Um, and originally the idea was that we would, whenever we had left over, we would knit, um, wind off 20 grams for the other person and keep 20 grams for yourself, and we would send 12 of them to the other person and keep 12, and so you would have half of theirs, half of yours that you would open one a day. And that was all good, and then I got carried away. So I did a full 24 day calendar for my sister because I had the yarn to do it with. Um, and so she is doing the same for me, which is really exciting. Um, so I have almost all of it here. I think there's still a few days that aren't here. Um, that she's going to send in the next parcel that she sends. But this is what she has sent so far. And then, just to make it a bit more work, but also a bit more fun, we decided to make it Friends themed. We both love Friends. We've watched Friends for years. Um, and so we made it Friends themed. So you can see she's put some stickers on, the one where he runs. Just a cute little package for me to open when it comes to that day. Um, I'm, I'm not going to look at all of them, but, um, the one where Chandler can't remember which sister. How awkward. If you've seen Friends, awkward episode. Um, number three, and she's got another Friends sticker on the back. Um, yeah, just really fun little things that we have. So if you have a yarn friend that you could do a swap with, if you want an advent calendar and can't afford it, I recommend having a chat because we all have scraps, right? We all use scraps. I'm making a scrappy blanket um, and to wind off 20 grams, often there's 20 grams at the end of a pair of socks, um, sometimes there's 30 or 40. To wind off 20 grams and yeah make an advent calendar or you could even make your own honestly having 20 gram minis even if it's yarn you've used before if you put it away and then at the end of the year unwrap it one a day whether you do it as a like i organize them in a rainbow gradient um yeah you can do all sorts of fun things make your own advent calendar Adults who do that all the time, right? So, I got that. I'm very excited about that. I also got a parcel from the Crazy Sock Lady. Now, I'm still waiting on one more thing to arrive, but this is what I have already received. The first one, which I'm very excited about, is a sock ruler, sock wrist ruler. It came a wrist ruler. That makes more sense than the sock came in this little um, tin and it is a ruler. I don't know how clearly you can see that there, but it has inches and centimeters and it just wraps around twice. So if I take it off, it's actually a 16 inch ruler, which I just think is fun. I mean, I measure things a lot. I have measuring tapes all over the house. 16 inches often isn't big enough for what I measure. Um, but it is big enough for knitting things or sewing things sometimes. So I just like having a little bracelet on and knowing that I can measure things. I also got just a few pairs of these snips that she sells. Um, I actually bought some, a little sheath. I bought some from Spotlight Australia that are almost identical, if not identical. Um, but I cannot find them online nearby where I live now. And so when I was putting an order, I got some of them. And I got some handy tools to go into my knitting bags. And this is just a crochet hook on one end and a point to like a knitting needle on the other. So it's very similar to just a crochet hook, but it's designed that you can use crochet or knitting needle to help pick up stitches and fix problems. Um, and, oh, there you go. It's also designed to turn a collar point for sewing. Um, 
but yeah I have wanted something like this for a while and I've again looked could not find them anywhere else she had them and they were two dollars ten American so very happy with that I also got some more tape measures because you always need tape measures for knitting bags and I keep running out this one is also a tape measure but it looks like a ball of yarn so I thought that was fun um less space efficient but fun and I got I'll take this one out of the bin out of the plastic scrappy Sunday because I'm getting into scrappy Sunday and at the moment my scrappy Sunday is in a basket so I can't actually put it on the basket but I thought that was lots of fun so I will put it on a bag when I get a bag maybe for make scrappy socks and put it in a bag um oh and I also got this mini scale from her which again I've looked around for and could only find in her shop so yeah really handy to just have a little scale to wind off things like little mini skeins and things um and also I'm finding it useful to check how much my things weigh like when I finish a sock to find out how much that weighs um yeah so I haven't actually bought any yarn in the past month I've been tempted many 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 times but I bought so much yarn in May that every time I've thought about buying more I'm like I just I can't knit that quickly I don't need more um I want more I always want more it is one of those things that the more you get the more you want you're not satisfied and so it's worth being aware of that but I can't knit what I've got and there are other things that I want to make but nothing that I want to make that I'm going to start now so I've held off on buying more I think the next thing I'm going to buy will be more yarn for dyeing because one of my knitting friends is visiting from Australia yay and so we'll do some dyeing together just as a bit of fun so I'll buy some more yarn for dyeing but yeah no more yarn purchases yet another thing so that's that's all my project related buying things um but i did find out that there is a knitting fair in poland it is in september it is in Toren, uh, which is north like kind of middle of poland but north um or closer to the north but we were already planning to go away on a trip to um, the Baltic Sea, so up the very top of Poland in September. And this knitting festival is happening at the beginning of that trip, two thirds of the way up. So I'm going. I'm so excited. I had looked and looked for knitting festivals and had not found anything of the sort here in Poland. Um, of course, I'm mostly searching in English because I don't understand or I didn't understand Polish when I was looking um but I've been following a few Polish designers and shop owners and one of them mentioned it and I was like I'm going I'm going I'm going and so we're gonna make it work we'll stop on the way up and have a couple of days well one day two nights so that we can go I have some knitting friends that are gonna come with me um we will probably have the kids as well and give my husband a bit of a break um but we'll see anyway it'll be nice it'll be fun knitting so i also need to save money so that i can buy from the stores there because there are there are workshops you can do but there are also going to be lots of indie dyes from around poland um showing their stuff so i'm really excited for that and I'm sure in September I will have some things to show you from that but until then I'm gonna knit what I've got finish some projects start some new ones knit all the socks um, finish jumpers for winter send some things to Australia yeah it's 
pretty good. All right. Thank you for joining me. Um, it's been really great to go through knitting things again. And it's been really nice to sit down and chat with you. If there's any questions that you have, just comment below and I will get back to you when I can. Thanks very much. Bye.